So I know I did this short little series where I talked about movies I find overrated. And honestly, I want to continue that series because there's a lot more movies I find overrated. But however, in this video, I want to talk about some movies I find underrated. Now, this isn't to mix it up with the term overlooked, which are movies that, you know, don't get as much appreciation and aren't as noticed as in films that people don't really see. When I say the term underrated, I mean movies that people have seen, but I don't think get as much appreciation or love as they should get. As in movies that people mostly have to a lower regard than I think they deserve. So without further ado, let's get into some underrated films. Now, this is a movie that is liked, but I feel like it isn't loved enough because there's so many great things about it that people don't really seem to understand. First off, Sissy Spacek in this movie is absolutely fantastic. She does such a great job at playing this girl that just wants to be left alone and wants to ha live a great and happy life and just, you know, wants to be given a break. But that doesn't happen, unfortunately. She, you know, she ends up you know, dying without having a happy life because we want this girl to be happy. We want her to be um, living a very joyful and fulfilling life because she seems like a good person. And we see how horrible people treat her, how terrible they treat her. And, you know, nothing but terrible things really happen to her throughout the entirety of the film. And then she finally reaches her breaking point and isn't able to control her powers really and ends up killing everybody in that in the high school which while isn't exactly something that was justified or anything like that at the same time we still feel bad for her we still sympathize with her after her doing something like that after something like that something that horrible happening because it feels like carrie isn't exactly someone that's just a pure good person She's someone that has emotional problems, emotional issues, and sometimes isn't able to control them. She is a good person. But, however, there are just certain things about her that she can't control, and because of that, it leads to this happening. If anything, it's not supposed to be specifically a horrifying tale of jump scares waiting to happen. And if anything, it's weird horror. It's hard to exactly describe what makes this movie so terrifying, but at the same time, it just feels terrifying. You know, it feels scary in a way. It's weird how Stephen King was able to pull that off in the book, how Brian De Palma was able to pull that off in the movie. I can't really describe the horror that is going on in this film, but you always feel that horrific atmosphere that constantly keeps being built up. It's just overall weird. I feel like a lot of the reason why this movie works so well is because of how real it feels at the beginning and how grounded it feels at the beginning in its own way. While you could say that the bullies are over the top, I don't really think they are. I feel like they feel like realistic bullies that would be, you know, in the real world. That were bullies that, you know, pick, picked on people like Carrie. And I feel like that's what makes it so real and grounded at the beginning. And that's what makes it feel, you know, so down to earth, even though it's someone with psychic powers which is you know not realistic at all but because it was so grounded at the beginning we really feel for these characters and care about them so seeing them die like even especially the ones that you know did care and love carrie or like at least tried to you know have her live a happy life it's sad overall i feel like it's a great film that many people overlook and don't really appreciate it for that people like this movie i just feel like it deserves more appreciation for being such a phenomenal and such an amazing horror film batman returns is a movie that most people don't really like all that much and i don't understand why people don't really like it all that much i feel like there's so many great things about this movie when it comes down to it it just has an overall package that is great for a Batman movie. First off, of course the style is great, just like in the first one. It's all very gothic, and it perfectly encapsulates 
what Gotham is like, and it feels like a comic book come to life in some senses with the way Gotham City is, with the way a lot of shots are. It all looks so gothic and very Burton-like, but also at the same time, it feels like a Batman movie with the way it is all stylized, and I think it works very, very well in my opinion. Also, I really think that Penguin's tragic backstory was interesting, and I really like that part about him. Even though I really don't like the fact that he's way too much like a penguin, I felt like Danny DeVito did a really good job playing him, and I felt like, overall, as a character, I think he was really good. Selena Kyle is absolutely fantastic in this movie. She is the Catwoman. Out of all three of them we've gotten, she is by far the best. She perfectly encapsulates Catwoman. It feels like the comic book character, character come to life, in so many ways i absolutely love that about this movie also i think one thing that people very much overlook about this film is seeing the tragic love story between selena kyle and bruce wayne this is something that's very interesting and very fascinating and i feel like most people don't really talk about it when it comes down to this film in particular and i feel like people you know should talk about it more this whole tragic idea of you know, Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne wanting to have this happy life together and them wanting to be happy. And of course, Selena Kyle would love to be, you know, happy with Bruce Wayne, but she can't really live with herself when that happens because she has to, you know, she has to kill this person. She has to get revenge on this person and it ends up with them, you know, living apart and one of them being dead and Bruce Wayne being alone and that's one tragic part about bruce wayne that or batman that really isn't really looked at too much throughout you know other other um movies and i feel like this one does a really good job at it of course there's a couple other ones like batman mask of the phantasm um and, and other ones i can't really name them any other ones off the top of my head but that's the main one that comes to mind but anyways the thing is there's this tragic love story between selena kyle and Batman, and seeing the fact that they would want to be together, but because of their different morals, their different philosophies, and their not not exactly philosophies, but like their different morals and the way they view things, and you know the different goals that they want to achieve, they end up apart, and they and Bruce Wayne ends up alone, and he's still unfortunately the same as he was at the beginning of the movie. It's sad, but. It's just the reality of Batman. I feel like this movie does a really good job at showing that. And I feel like people don't really appreciate this movie on the level of other Batman films. And I feel like it should be appreciated a lot more. Now, I know what you're thinking, but this movie is so criminally underrated in so many ways that honestly, it's not even funny. This movie is one of the most unique films I have probably ever seen and somehow even with all of its wacky craziness and sometimes it definitely doesn't feel like it's supposed to be in the same setting as when Romeo and Juliet was it somehow just breathes Shakespeare's play in a way that I just can't really comprehend it I've read the entirety of Shakespeare's play as like a, a project for school and I can tell you very much so that it really does a pretty good job at encapsulating Shakespeare while being so crazy and chaotic because it feels like Shakespeare kind of was crazy and chaotic and goofy and wacky at times and this movie definitely is that with the comedy it feels so much like how it was in the play especially when there's like direct quoted lines they just work so well and I think it it just is so great I love how in ways it really goes from this comedy and slowly descending into a tragedy how Romeo and Juliet, Juliet was it really you know just shows the descent like it was in the play and i think it works super well i think the chemistry is there overall it just really does such a good job at embodying the play in so many different ways and while it's not a fantastic movie i think it's pretty good i think it's a pretty good film overall Okay, now I know there are still people out there 
that like Spider-Man 3 and enjoy Spider-Man 3, but there's still a decent amount of people out there that are just plain wrong and hate this movie for some reason. Now, I used to be in that train when I was a Sean Chandler fanboy, and now that I have grown and learned to have exquisite taste, I have realized that Spider-Man 3 is actually, you know, a pretty fun and entertaining movie, you know, as it is. Is it perfect? No, it's not. There are a lot of flaws to it. There's so many, you know, plot conveniences, way too many characters, and sometimes it does feel like a mess, but it has so many great things about it, and it is a complete blast from start to finish. I really do love the character arcs with Sandman and with Harry. I think those two in particular work very well, even if sometimes it feels like they're not as fleshed out as they should be for the most part they work really well into the movie we see harry you know finally after like him you know hating spider-man and being the villain for a lot of it and then seeing him redeem himself at the end and having an emotional death was great seeing sandman as he's you know trying to become a better person for his daughter and just a better person overall and seeing that whole confrontation with peter and sandman after like, you know, he knows that he killed Uncle Ben, even though I don't really like him being the killer of Uncle Ben. I think for this movie, what it's trying to go for, that ending, that scene where we last see Sandman, which is pretty much the ending scene, I thought it was great. I thought it worked really well overall. I feel like the only problem with this movie is that there's too many jumbled things uh, when it comes down to it, too many plot lines, and sometimes it just doesn't work. I do not really like Venom in this movie at all, uh, Eddie Brock. Didn't really do that. Didn't do that great of a job. I, he's by far the worst thing about this movie. CGI on him doesn't really hold up. But then you get some fun stuff when you got Peter being an emo character. Pretty much, it just it's hilarious. It's so funny and quirky, and he's such a dork. I absolutely love it. And, uh, and then you have like the action scenes that are so big and grand and so fun, and the the visuals are as great as ever. It's a movie that, while being very sloppy with its story and having too many things crammed into it, it's just such a fun, entertaining movie and still has so many good things about it at the end of the day. I, I don't know why people don't praise this movie more. It deserves it. It really deserves it.